Hi, I'm Stephanie Woodward, and I am here to talk to you about advocacy and lobbying. I've worked in advocacy for over 12 years, and I'm excited to talk to you about how you can use advocacy to help you achieve your goals and the goals for your organization. So what I'm specifically going to be talking about today are the three additional forms that we provided for you, in addition to the text provided on the advocacy and lobbying page. So I'm not going to be going to reiterate everything that I've already told you in text form that's written on the page, but instead I'm going to go over the additional documents that we provided for you, which include the flyer, the press release, and the legislative advocacy versus lobbying one-pager. And the first thing I want to go over today is the flyer. So the flyer is a document that you'll find on the advocacy and lobbying webpage that looks like um, this, which is a document online. It's a web document that has an image of Andrew Cuomo, um, governor of New York on it. Um, and it's got text on one side about, um, on, it starts with on a scale of one to 10, how much does governor Cuomo care about disabled New Yorkers? It has an image of him holding up uh, his hand like uh, a zero um, or an okay sign and underneath it says zero. And then on the other side of this form, uh, this flyer, it is not a duplicate of the flyer like it usually would be, but instead it has instructions on how to make a good flyer. Um, so when you make your own flyer, and it would come out to when you create the half page to look like one full flyer on a half page paper. Um, so that means that you would take the information and duplicate it um, in a landscape form onto your document. And then what I do is I like to make a double-sided uh, document so that it's a one-pager that has a front and back so that on the front you can have some catchy information, really grab the attention of a person. And then on the back, you can give a lot more detail about what's going on. So when would you use a flyer? If you're going to have a direct action, such as a march, a rally, a protest, those are great times to use a flyer. Flyers are great to inform the public about what's going on because you may have a great group there who all know what's happening, but there's going to be people who are passing by who have no idea what you're doing there and why you're making such a commotion. And you want them to be well informed about your issue. You want them to start talking about it. And honestly, you might want them to be as, just as upset as you are about the injustice happening. So by having a flyer that you can hand them to inform them, that would allow them to read the information and learn. And they may engage in conversation or they may keep on walking, but at least they have the opportunity to be informed. So this is a way that you can mix two different forms of advocacy because flyers can be viewed as media advocacy because you're educating the community, but also you're using it during a direct action. So those are two different forms of advocacy being used at one time. Another great way to use advocacy um, when you're putting them all together is the press release. So. Um, on the website, you will see a, a link to a sample press release where you can really fill this out to meet your community's needs. But I strongly recommend that no matter what you're doing, if it's something that you want the community to know about, press release it. It could be a direct action that you want people to know that you're about to protest this place or you're currently protesting that place. But it could also be something administrative. Did your board member recently publicly testify at a town council meeting on an issue. You could make a press release about that as well. You could also make a press release if you are starting a lawsuit. Are you going to try to enforce the law through a lawsuit by suing a certain business or organization on behalf of your organization? Then you could make a press release about that to inform the community. You could also inform the community about a new policy that your organization has helped to create and implement in your city ordinance, or perhaps on a statewide or federal level. You can create a press release to inform the public about this. 
So that is using multiple forms of advocacy and mixing them together. So if you read the other information, you will have learned about legislative advocacy, which is working with the legislative arms such as policymakers. So if you work with policymakers, and something comes of it, um, you can make a press release about it. Or perhaps if you're working with a policymaker and they're not doing what you need, you can make a press release about it. That is using media advocacy to mix with legislative advocacy. Um, you'll have also learned about administrative advocacy. That's things like um, testifying or submitting comments on a proposed rule. You can make a press release about that. Um, and then for legal, we talked about if you're going to create a lawsuit or um, pursue a lawsuit, then you could create a press release to talk about that publicly as well. That could be a part of your legal strategy. And then even mixing it um, with anything else that you're doing is really a good way to use this press release to educate the community about your issues. And the last thing I really wanted to talk through was the difference between um, lobbying and advocacy. So you'll have read already about legislative advocacy and lobbying. Um, there is a difference and I don't want you to be afraid to do legislative advocacy because you think it's lobbying and that lobbying is not allowed. Um, so first of all, sometimes lobbying is allowed. It's just a percentage is not allowed or certain funding is not allowed. Um, but that doesn't mean that lobbying is fully prohibited at all times by every single person in your organization. That's not the case generally. Um, but I did include a link in the additional links to lobbying rules for each state. I would strongly recommend you take a look at your state's lobbying rules. But I also included a one-pager um, that uh, goes through what is legislative advocacy versus lobbying. Um, in addition to the text on the page, this one pager can help you just determine, um, is what I'm about to do legislative advocacy or is it lobbying? And so the first thing you're gonna wanna ask yourself is, am I about to talk about a bill that has been introduced? If yes, then you probably are gonna be lobbying. If no, if you're not talking about a bill that's been introduced, then you're probably not lobbying because lobbying generally is about a bill that is introduced, asking for support for something that's introduced or asking a policymaker to oppose something. Um, but if you're talking about a general issue in your community that is not specifically tied to you using words like, I want you to support X bill, then it's not considered lobbying. So let's say that I am opposed to um, the Medicaid bias that um, keeps people with disabilities from getting married um, because people with disabilities can lose their Medicaid, but they could also lose their social security income if they get married because um, the two of them combined may have too much income, all these different things. Um, so a lot of disabled people don't get married because of this, because they fear they're going to lose their benefits and they can't live without them. I'm opposed to this. I can go and talk to legislators about what an issue this is for people with disabilities. As a person with a disability myself, I think that it's wrong that there are people who are just like me in the world who don't enjoy the right to marriage simply because they may lose the benefits that they need to live. You shouldn't have to choose between being married and having the benefits you need to live. And I can talk very deeply about this matter. And it's not lobbying because I'm not saying, and I need you to support a specific bill or I need you to oppose a specific bill. I'm talking about a specific problem <laughs> and I can say there's solutions to this. Congress should address this by changing the way the law works. But again, I'm not lobbying because I'm not suggesting a specific bill um, or a specific law be changed. So I think that that should help clear it up. Uh, but this, <coughs> excuse me, should 
help you go through this. Um, so inviting a policymaker to your organization um, to see how different things have impacted your organization is not lobbying. So let's say um, bail reform, that's really big in New York right now. It could be positively impacting your organization or negatively impacting your organization. I don't know, for each organization it's different, but you could invite your policymakers to your organization to see how it's impacting your organization. That's not lobbying. You're simply showing them the impact. Um, whereas if you're asking your members to call their legislators to have them vote against or for bail reform, then that is lobbying. Even if you're not personally doing it and your organization's not doing it, if you're asking your members to do it, that is indirect lobbying. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, and I hope that you and your organization enjoy advocacy efforts and don't be afraid to do some good legislative advocacy um, just because it might be lobbying. As long as you know the rules, you can certainly get a lot of great things done. Thanks so much. Have a great day.